So let's say we're trying to add up the area from x equals a to x equals b for this function f of x. We could divide it up into n rectangles, either inscribed rectangles or circumscribed rectangles. The blue rectangles represent inscribed rectangles. So those are the largest rectangles underneath the curve, right? Uh, circum so it's like you're inflating the, the columns from below. You're just pushing them up until they bump the curve. Circumscribed rectangles would be the ones that we're going to deflate from above until they bump into the curve. So behind the blue rectangles are red rectangles that stick out a little bit further, right? Okay, depending on what the curve is doing at the time, that's going to give you different types of area estimates. If the curve is increasing monotonically, like this one is, it's increasing always, on the interval in question, then uh, the inscribed rectangles would be generated by calculating the heights at the left edge of each subinterval, right? If it's increasing, then the right, the circumscribed rectangles would always be bumping into the curve at the right edge of each subinterval, right? And so if we wanted to be able to add up the areas of each of these, really all we have to do is multiply the width of each rectangle by its height. Well, what's the width going to be? It depends on the width of the interval and the number of rectangles, right? Wouldn't you agree that the width of each individual rectangle is simply going to be the width of the total area divided by the number of equally wide rectangles? So therefore, it's just b minus a over n, what we call delta x, right? OK, what's the height going to be? Well, the height is just going to be given by either the value of the function at the left edge of the interval or the right edge. Okay, but we've got to be able to find names. And really, much of what we did, honestly, just, broke, or just uh, turned out to be finding ways to name the left and right edges of each subinterval, right? So let's take, for example, the, the first subinterval, right, that contains the first rectangle. Well, that starts at A. We're going to call that X sub 0, right? And then if we move over by delta X, that leaves us at X sub 1. If we move over by another delta X, it leaves us at X sub 2, all the way on over to, we're going to do that N times, aren't we? So that's going to push us over to X sub N, right? The left edge of the second subinterval is the same thing as the right edge of the first subinterval, isn't it? Right? So the left edge of, of rectangle number two is really x sub one. Okay? All right. So then how could we say, in general, because what we really want to do is we want to be able to name the rectangles in terms of a generic index variable i, where i could represent any of the discrete numbers of the rectangles. It could be the first, it could be the second if i was 2, it could be the nth if i equaled n, it could be the n minus 1th, but in general it's the ith, right? So then what is x sub i? What is going to be the right edge of the ith rectangle? Well, it's just going to be starting at a, we're going to take how many steps of delta x to get there? Well, I, whatever I might be, right? If I was 7, then we would have to take 7 steps to get there, right? If it was n, we'd have to take n steps. But in general, let's just call it i. It's going to be the starting line, which is a, plus i times delta x to get over to, to walk over to the right edge of the i subinterval, right? So we could just say then 
that x sub i is equal to a plus i delta x, right? What would uh, a what would x sub i minus one be then? Well, that would just be a plus the quantity i minus one times delta x, right? And so what about this then? If we want to calculate, what we ended up wanting to do here is we wanted to calculate a left sum and a right sum. What do we mean by that? The left sum is just going to be the sum of all the rectangles determined by the left edge of each subinterval. So that's literally just going to be the sum of a sub of a sub i for that sum. Right? But what is a sub i going to look like? What is the left rectangle, the ith left rectangle looked like, look like? Well, it's going to have a width of delta x, and it's going to have a height of whatever the function is evaluated at the left edge of the subinterval. Right? So its height is just going to be f of x sub i minus 1. Okay? Uh, and we're just going to, we're just literally going to sum those up to get our answer. Okay? What would the right, rec the ith right rectangle look like? Once again, it's going to be, it's going to be the same format. Thank you. It's just going to be width times height to get the area of the rectangle. Well, the width is just delta x. What's the height going to be? Well, the height is just going to be determined. That's the height right there. Whoops. This is the height right here, isn't it, of that rectangle? What is that? Well, that's just the value of our function. That's just f of x. It's just the value of our function there, which is at x sub i, right? So it's f of x sub i. Okay. All right, so that's what the that's what the summation expression would look like for adding up each of those right rectangles. Does that make sense? Okay. For our problem, it, the left ones work out to be the inscribed, and the right ones work out to be the circumscribed. But what if the function were decreasing? It would be reversed, wouldn't it? Right. Then the left rectangles would be the big ones, and the right ones would be the small ones. Right. Agree. Okay, so, so we, we actually did some problems like this then, right? We, we said, okay, this is what we're going to start with. We know that A sub L is just this, where F is specific to our problem, and so is A, and so is B, and so is N. But otherwise, everything's going to be the same, right? This is how we define X sub I minus 1. It's just A plus I minus 1 times delta X. We always define x sub i as a plus i delta x. And we looked at a couple of actual examples. We looked at one example, I think. We looked at the example, we picked kind of a hard one. We picked the example f of x equals x squared on the interval from 1 to 8. And we said we were going we were gonna pick 10, arbitrarily going to pick 10 rectangles, right? And so what did all this look like then? Well, we're just going to start with these formulas and see, see what we get. So we ended up with uh, what would we did the, let, let's just do the right, was it the right one we did first? Was it the right one? We did the, I guess we did the left one, didn't we? We did the hard one first. So the left one. So we're going to determine what is f of x sub i minus 1 and what is delta x? Well, delta x is just going to be b minus a, the total width of the interval, divided by the number of rectangles, which was 10, yeah. right? So does it make sense that delta x is just going to be 7 tenths for us? Yeah. Right? OK. Uh, the function is f of x. Well, what is x sub i minus 1? Let's go up here and see. x sub i minus 1 is a, which is 1 plus i minus 1 times delta x. Delta x is just 7 tenths, right? So this is the expression right here that we're going to feed into our function, f of x. What's our function? We're just squaring whatever is inside, right? OK, so then we come down here. And this is what we've got, right? We've got the left sum 
is the sum as i runs from 1 to 10 of each of these rectangles, right? f of a plus i minus 1 delta x times delta x. Okay, we did talk about how if we were going to write this sum out, each of these terms, when I, let, I go from 1 to 10, I'm always going to multiply, end up multiplying each term through by 7 tenths. So that is effectively a common factor of each term, right? So as you guys did last year, we, we know that if we have a constant, that, a constant within our, our sum, we can just pull that out front and multiply it by the whole sum, just like it's a, because it's a greatest, it's a factor. Well, it's a greatest factor, but it's a factor. So we threw the 7 tenths out front. That sounds kind of aggressive, doesn't it? Threw it out front. And then we just literally added this thing up, right? We just found out, well, what do we get? So f of f of this is literally just that quantity squared, right? And so we would say, okay, well, what do we get when i is 1? Well, when i is 1, we just get 1 plus 7 tenths times 1 minus 1 uh, is 0, right? So I would just get 1 squared is 1, right? What would we get when i is 2? Well, when i is 2, we'd get 1 plus 7 tenths times 1, so 1 and 7 tenths, or 17 tenths, squared, right? And so on and so forth, and we'll just add all those up. Well, it's a lot harder to do that by hand. We'll just do it on our calculators instead. Just use the sigma feature on our calculators to give us an answer, right? But what we're coming up with then is literally an estimate of the area based on the inscribed rectangles. It's going to be a little bit less than the actual area, of course, right? Because we're missing a little bit with each rectangle, right? But it's going to give us a lower approximation, essentially, in this case. So what about the right rectangles? The right rectangles are easier because x sub i is easier to deal with than x sub i minus 1. It's just a plus i delta x. But it's the same exact process, isn't it? So we'd end up taking the sum of... I don't know if we ever wrote this one down, did we? I don't think we did. But what would it be? What would it be? Well, it's right here, I guess, isn't it? A sub r is going to be 7 tenths delta x, we factored out, times f of a plus i delta x, which is just a plus i delta x squared. a is 1, delta x is 7 tenths, so we just get a plus i delta x squared right? Because that's f of x. And so we would just add each of these up for uh, i goes from 1 to 10, right? We get our answer. And, and, and we did that. And we found, and let's just, let's just pull up the calculator and remind ourselves how we can put this stuff in. So the i minus 1 and the i, like we use both of those in one problem? Or is well, yeah, you'd use one for the left sum and one for the right sum. Well, essentially, yeah. And it's not going to be perfect, but it's going to give us, if you find the average, it's going to be a better approximation than either one separately, right? Especially if we're going to limit ourselves to monotonic increasing and decreasing functions, right? We're going to come up with a better solution to this momentarily, but I want you to see how this, this does work. It gives us an approximation that's a decent approximation, right? Why is using the left and the right give you any different number? Uh, well, it gives us a different number because... Look at the, you tell me, would the area of all the, the blue triangles be the same as the area of all the red triangles? Wouldn't the red area be bigger? Because yeah. each The red of, area includes the blue. Right, the red area, yeah, the red, those are hidden behind the blue ones, oh, right? Oh, so the other is like above the line. Right, oh, right. Okay. I thought it was just like using the right side, and then I thought like it was going to the right or going to the left. I didn't know. Well, it's, so what we're saying is the rectangles, and let me say, now after we've kind of talked about the process a little bit, let's, let's remind ourselves, you know, where did we get the red and the blue? Well, in this case, we got the red and the blue because we didn't really specify circumscribed or inscribed. All we specified was we're going to calculate left areas or right areas, right? When we calculate left areas, the left edge is always going to be lower than the right edge of each subinterval, right? And so that's going to give us inscribed rectangles in this case. The right edge, the right area, is going to give us the, the bigger of the two. It's going to give us the circumscribed rectangles, right? 
And so because the function's increasing, you know, we, we, we know that somewhere in between the red sum and the blue sum is going to be the actual answer. It's not going to be the average. It's not going to be the average because it's not a line. This function's not a line. And so it's not as though the difference between the red and the blue is symmetrical about the actual area, right? You see that? It's going to be a little bit off. It's going to give us a fairly good approximation, right? We do it to a thousand different right. Well, right. So now, so now let's let's just and this is going to be kind of a day just to set the table for tomorrow. But but let's just make sure we, everyone wasn't here last time. Let's make sure everyone we're up to speed with this, and maybe even try a problem together just to make sure we have all this down. So, so let's go into our calculator, and let's just remind ourselves how we could do this, right? So if we're trying to, here we set up, uh, here, here we set up this, right here, right? Here we set up this sum that our calculator can just do for us really quickly. So we could leave the 7 tenths in there. It's fine, but we could also pull it out front. I, I pulled it out front last time. I'll just leave it in this time. No big deal. So we're just going to go um, math, scoot up from the bottom until you get to summation. So we're going to take the sum as x is our only variable. That becomes our index variable on the calculator. As x goes from 1 to 10, of what? Well, of that, right? Actually, of that. So we're going to have to have, and you guys, I screwed this up so many times last time. Let's just make sure, see if you guys can stop me from screwing it up this time. So let's open up another set of parentheses for the exponent, right? So then within those parentheses, I'll insert here, we're going to have 1 plus... 7 tenths times the quantity x minus 1 scoot over squared. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Times my 7 tenths, right? <laughs> And it might look a little better if we used our fraction template. Okay, but that's it. Okay, and that gives us an answer, right? That gives us an answer of that. That's going to be our lower estimate, right? So now let's go up, and all we want to do is calculate this estimate, right? And I'm just going to leave the 7 tenths inside. And I'm just going to go back and recycle this previous expression because there just going to be a few changes. So second left scoots me over to the left and what do I have to do? Well really all I have to do here is is exchange the x minus 1 with an x, right? Everybody agree? Okay. So we'll just make that an x and then I'll just delete all that stuff and I get that. And so somewhere in between the two is going to be the estimated area. Right? Okay, well, I'm going to show you how to find the area here. I hate to do that because it, it, it it's so much fun to just have you discover on your own as we go through this. But, That's a good one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, it is. So we got this guy plus this guy <laughs> divided by two. Divided by two. Whoa. There you go. Whoa. Nice, nice. So that's a, that's a pretty good estimate. Well, what's the actual area? Let's find out. The actual area. 70.33333. What's there is? You, we're gonna. There's gonna be a calculus way that's gonna avoid all this, and I'm gonna get you to it. I'm not gonna spend a ton of time on. I'm gonna get you to it pretty quickly. You guys have really picked up on this part fast, though. I mean, this is this is pretty good. So if we go math, uh, I'll go down here to number nine. Infinite or oh hell. Yeah. <laughs> And you'll see why this works later. But for now, what was it, from 1 to 8? 10. 10. Oh, 1 to 8. Yeah, 1 to 8. Right, yeah, right. Okay. We're Should adding up the area said. under the curve x squared, right? This feels like it's cheating. This is cheating. This is a great way to cheat, though. That's the actual answer. Okay. So we got pretty close. 
right? Pretty darn close. Okay, uh, let's try another one. Let's try another one of these. Let's do, let's start from scratch. Get out your notebooks. Wait, we didn't get, did we get to see the, oh. No, we're good, we're good, that's what we're going to do next. But you just, but, What goes after the D? It's, it's coming up. I'll show you, I'll show you. You're teasing us, Mr. I am, I am, it's kind of fun. I have to, I don't get paid very much, so I've got to have a little bit of fun with you. It's just the way it goes. <laughs> All right, so how about let's do this one? Let's add up the area. Okay, let's do this. Let's add up, let's take the function. f of x equals 4 minus x squared. If I were to graph that, you all know what that looks like. It's just going to look like... Right? And let's find the area from 1 to 2. So we're going to find this area. We're going to attempt to find that area right there under, under the curve by using rectangles. Okay, uh, so we're going to do this on the interval from 1 to 2, and let's go ahead and use, like, how many? Let's use 21. We're just going to do n equals 4 to start with. make it more accurate if you need more numbers. Yeah, yep. it does. It does. Right. Right over there. Okay. Sorry, I wasn't here. I was participating in extracurricular. Oh, okay. I was right. team. I'm sorry. No. So, <laughs> so, so we're going to find here. Let's go ahead and find a left sum first of all. Okay. So, what's the left sum going to look like? So, what does we're going to call this L sub i is going to be the area of the ith left rectangle. Okay. Right. Well, what's that going to be? Left sum is no big deal. It's never it never changes. We always know it's just going to be this is going to be f of what? The left sum. It's going to be f of x sub i minus 1, right? Yes. Times Delta x, right? Okay. Okay, no big deal. And what is delta x? Delta x is just b minus a over n, right? Which is just 2 minus 1 over 4, so 1 fourth. Everybody agree? Okay. Good. So then if we want to calculate, while we're at it, let's write down what is r sub i. What's going to be the area of the ith right rectangle? F of x size. X sub i, x sub I. times delta x, x right? I. Okay. So let's be more specific then. Uh, for L sub i is going to equal uh, f of x sub i. What is x sub i? Uh, sorry, x sub i minus 1. Well, it's, it's always going to be. Four minus x minus one. It's squared. always a plus. What time? How many steps? Delta x. four. Oh, no, in general, i minus one though, right? Oh. So it's always going to be just in general. We know that. Let, let's define these. Let's remind ourselves about these. Yes. So we know that x sub i minus one is always the generic way, the general way of saying that is always going to be a plus i minus one delta x. Right? And x sub i is always going to be a plus i delta x, right? 
Make sense? Okay. So then what does this guy become? So this guy becomes f of a plus i minus 1 times delta x. Well, what is a for us? 1. So it's going to be 1 plus i minus 1 times 1 fourth. Everybody agree? Okay. Times 1 fourth. And our function is just 4 minus x squared, right? Everybody agree? So then, so then this part right here is just becoming 4 minus that squared, isn't it? Right? 4 minus the quantity 1 plus i minus 1 over 4 squared. Everybody agree? And I'm going to multiply that whole thing times, whoops, 1 fourth. Okay, let me pause there. Does that all make sense? Michelle, I mean, you missed that one, but uh, ask me a question if you need to. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, so. And, and, and just think what we did. Don't lose sight of what we did. That just defines arbitrarily the i left area, right? Can you explain i, I itself? Like, i itself is just like. Okay, so I, I is, all i is, is just a counting number. It's just, it's just to keep track of. counting number. It is. It's, it's just going to be a count. It's an index variable, which means a counting variable. It's going to be. Its, its values can only be. Its initial value is one, and its final value is going to be whatever the biggest number of things we're counting is. Right? So it's like n. It's okay. It's. It's. Or is its final value n minus one? It's. Its final value is n, because it's going to go from the first rectangle. It, it stands for. All of the quantities associated with the first rectangle down to the i, to the nth, right? And i could just be anything in between. And we're just going to let i be, okay, if it's 1, then this is its area. What if it's 7? What if it's n? And we'll just add up each of those contributions from 1 to whatever n is, okay? So then... So we can't just multiply the 1 fourth by the 4 because that's all one thing, right? You can't write... Exactly. Okay. I mean, you you could you actually could distribute it. that through, but it would but just yeah, create more, more hassle. Right. So this is just L sub I. So then the total area, right, if we, if we say, okay, what is A sub L? A sub L, the left area under the curve is just going to be the sum of all of the left rectangles, right? as i goes from 1 up to n, which in this case is 4. Right? Everybody agree? Let's do something really tricky with this, though. Let's not even, now, oh, how much time we got? Two uh, minutes. It's, it's less than a minute. It's a minute. Serious? Two minutes. Yes. It's, two. it's a Monday. It's a Monday, it's a Monday my dude. dude. Come on, man. Go yell Mondays are not calculus friendly. They are not. Don't worry, I've got a certain problem going on in my calculator that's been going on for almost seven minutes. Okay, yeah, it's thinking hard. It is thinking okay, let's see if we can at least finish this guy up then. So we're going to get, so we're going to get then the sum of all this stuff. But right, but I could go ahead if I'm doing the sum of four minus one plus i minus one over four squared times the constant one fourth. Let's just put that out front, right? Okay, because okay, that's just going to be a common factor as i goes from 1 to 4. And now we're to the point where we could do this one manually really easily, right? We could just find what the answers were for 1, 2, 3, and 4 and add them all up. Yeah. Probably almost quicker than doing our calculator. What would they be? We're going to get, whoops, 1 fourth. What if, what if i is 1? What do we get? 3. If i is 1, we just get 3, right? What if i is 2? We're going to get 5 fourths squared, so 25 sixteenths, 4 minus 25 sixteenths, right? Whatever that is. Agree? And then so on and so forth. Just add up those four terms. We're just going to get some big number. 
or not small number actually, right? And that's going to be our estimate. Okay, man, we need like 90 minute classes in here. Oh. Just when we get a our train of thought going, just roll. It just has to screech to a halt. Too many crossings. Too many crossings in our train of thought here. Oh yeah.